Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques for the movement professional while having fun. I'm your host, Casey Marie Hertz, and today we're going to be talking about foot articulations. This is a really important thing to look at when you're addressing your client's feet. For me, the feet are everything. If you can't organize and get the feet to be supple, mobile, elastic, and strong, it's going to be very hard to get the rest of the skeleton to reciprocate in organization and gravity. So I like to look at the human body in a, in a very holistic way, and that's why uh, the feet are really, really the foundation of our health and our longevity. Now, why is this? If you think about you know, the way that us Pilates teachers look at the body, Right? So when vertical energy from gravity pulling on our body from top to bottom um, gets transmuted into horizontal energy for us to move through, the foot is the first place that we start to digest that force to be able to move, to run, to walk, to jump, to stand, to sit. And so if your feet aren't used to moving in lots of different ways, that can be very hard for the rest of the body to figure out where it's supposed to be in space, uh, especially for the spine. And I really like to think about the feet being the spine of the lower body. Now, why would I say that? Well, if you look at the human skeleton, we know that the areas that are really built for mobility are the areas that are made up of tiny bones. So that would be the spine, the rib cage, the hands and the feet, right? So any place that you see on a skeleton with lots of little bones, that's built for movement, movement, movement. Now, as opposed to something like the femur, right, which is one long bone, the largest bone in our body, that's really built for stability and sending vibration uh, from top to bottom. So the feet, we wanna start to get them to, to be supple, with release work and then play with lots of different range of motion work as well as lots of strength. Um, and also if you think about it, that's kind of like the more Western standpoint of why the foot health is so important. But if we look at it in an Eastern way, there's a, a, a map of the whole health of your body is on the bottom of the feet. And that's through Chinese medicine and acupressure and acupuncture. Lots of areas on the foot really do tether through these energetic meridians to different organ systems, different areas of the body, really helping to unblock and move. Also, in between all of the toes, these areas are really meant in the meridian system to be the letting go part of the meridian system, which is really help, um, really important for the health and longevity of the body. Now, as I just quickly outlined, we wanna start with a little bit of release work before we start to try to get the foot to mobilize and really open up. Um, so I like to get this rolling pin or this dough roller. This is kind of like the foam roller for our back. We can use it on the feet. You can do the standing or sitting. And just like you would be rolling out your back, your spine, and your ribs uh, on, the, on the big foam roller, we can do that same work with the feet. Very important so that we can create that mobility in between all of those 26 bones of the foot. So you can go up, down, side to side. You can even do some nice pivot work from right to left to really break open the tension on the bottom of the foot for more movement possibilities. Now from here, we're gonna go on to the reformer. Reformer is wonderful for rehabbing feet, for strengthening them, and for getting people to start to understand how the organization really does go from the ground up. So I put the jump board on here because this is gonna be our fake floor. And right now I have a red and a blue spring on, so that means a heavy and a light spring um, I have on here. And this is really nice to do on the reformer because you don't have all of the body pressure or people's habitual movement patterns to get in the way. People are laying down supine. Again, we're taking vertical energy, we're transmuting it into horizontal energy, so there's less pressure on the joints and there's more availability for cueing. Now, what I'm gonna do is I have two overballs that are filled up about the same capacity, as close as I could get, and we're gonna start with this work here. 
So I'm gonna get to the edge. This is gonna be much easier to do with your clients. I have to do this on myself. So you're gonna get one foot onto the ball there. The other foot is going to get on there too. I'm gonna grab on with my toes so that Angelo doesn't have to help me here. And then I'm gonna go out to straight legs. Now, from here, you're gonna have to get comfortable on the reformer. You might have to pillow people up a little bit more, give them some low back support. And first things first is getting them to balance with a neutral spine and pelvis while on an unstable surface. From the bottom of my feet, it's sending lots of messages via the neurological system to figure out how to organize and balance on an unstable surface you're not used to. Now from here, this is just like the Mikasa ball pelvic clocking or the overball pelvic clocking. I can reach my heels to the jump board and then the ball of feet and toes. So this is really rolling through the ankle joint and figuring out how do I move without locking out the knees, getting this, let's call this 12 o'clock and six o'clock movement, tops of the toes to the heels. Now from here, we can even come to center and do outside and inside. So this would be the three and nine o'clock of the foot. This is waking up my arches big time. I've been on a plane all day. And so this feels actually really, really nice on the feet, getting them to mobilize. Now, this might seem super easy, but so many people's feet and ankles are so stuck that it's virtually impossible to get any strength work through the foot. Now from here, we can also do around the world. We can go to six, over to the outside, up to the top, in through the inside, and then the heel. So we're really tracing this full circle of the bottom of the feet and ankles, and then going the opposite direction. Very, very yummy work for the arches. Lots and lots of stretching and mobilizing through the foot. Now I'm gonna bring this in. I'm gonna pop those to the side, you don't need them. Now, from there, once we've opened up the bottom of the feet and used that ball as a tactile cue to really move our feet differently, uh, we're gonna do some foot articulations on the jump board. So just like a little snake, like we articulate and bridge the spine, I'm bridging my feet, working my feet all the way down to the bottom of the jump board without locking out the knees or losing my neutral pelvis and then going back up the top. This is very similar to standing towel footwork that you've seen a million times and a few times on our website, but this is how we can do it with a really different way and using the equipment. Again, you can always change up the springs to challenge or even lighter springs so that people really, really have to organize in space. This question comes in from Heather on our forum, and it's about varicose veins. She asks, I've heard that in middle age, some uh, knee problems are due to diminished blood flow to the knee. Also, do you have any tips about how to diminish, diminish varicose veins through any kind of release work in the pelvis or legs? These are very great questions. So the knee is a very vascular area, and it's also a really, really tender area. Um, if you think about it, all it is is a pass-through of the tissue from above the leg and below the leg. That's why the kneecaps in the center is to protect where they cross over and run into one another. Now, um, yeah, lots of lymph, lots of veins in the knee, and really tightness does creep up um, through uh, you know, different types of exercise. If we've been sitting a lot, if you think about flex knee position, this happens a lot. So the back of the knee can get extremely, extremely tight because of that. Then you have your, I call them the weekend warrior exercisers that sit all day, they get up and run, and then they sit back down for the rest of the day. And that can really ca cause really widespread tightness throughout the knee joint. So I wouldn't necessarily say it's a middle age problem. I would say it's more about how we're moving our body. So release work is really, really nice to help flush the tissue 
through the leg, doing a lot of work on the calf, the um, side of the calf, the feet, the quads, IT band, of course, we need to get that to open up. Lots of hip release points would be fabulous for the knee. I always like to think about if someone's having some knee issues, a lot of times it comes from tightness in the hip. These are much bigger muscles, a much larger joint than the knee, and sometimes it can bully the knee around. Now, that being said, there's a hierarchy of protection in your body, meaning that your body, if say uh, you're running and you, and you slip a little bit, your body's gonna wanna protect the vasculature, number one um, out of, over anything else because your blood flow is so important to keeping you alive. Number two, obviously your neurological system is going to be protected because you need that so that you can organize in space. Um, so a lot of times people will get soft tissue injuries in the knee because it's trying to save the vasculature. So it's just an interesting way to start to think about the body in a much different, uh, a much different capacity. Now for varicose veins, you gotta you gotta be careful with those with release work. You really want to stay away from those um, sites of injury. And varicose veins can be hereditary or they can happen from acute injuries. I know I have some on my calves from playing soccer for so many years and getting kicked in the calves so much. So you wanna stay away from, from that tissue. But what would be really good is to do a lot of release work above and below those sites so there's no other pooling or, or uh, lymphatic stagnation. And then nice massage, light massage, almost on more of the lymphatic side rather than the deep tissue um, massage in those areas would just be absolutely fabulous to help people um, that have really painful varicose veins. But very gentle, almost nothing on it, but doing release work around it would be the way to go. That's all for today, and if you have a question that you wanna see answered on an upcoming episode, you can comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or the forum. See you next time, and never stop learning.